today's video we continue with the Boxford rebuild and we start working on the apron. We also find out there's an eye hole that's been missing for the last 50 years but it doesn't seem to have had any effect on the lathe overall. So let's go into the workshop and see how we do it. The lathe was dismantled and all the parts thoroughly cleaned to remove any grease, dirt and swarf. On inspection, general mechanical health of it is quite good, but I've noticed here this hole is normally a little sprung loaded isler cap that you lift up the isler in there, but they haven't drilled it all the way through, so that should supply oil into this well here where the clutch system goes for the traverse and then the oil works its way through this little hole here and just maintains lubrication for the, for the clutch system. What I've noticed is it hasn't been drilled. They've drilled it obviously to put the cap in. So I'm going to drill the hole. I'll drill it smaller than this hole here. I'll, I'll, I'll drill it to about 4mm. So that's a little sprung loaded oiler. <coughs> And that will go in there like that, and you just top it up with oil. This is made in 1972, so this, this part of the system has never been lubricated properly. So I'm hoping the hole will come out just in here. I'm going to use the drill press to drill it, but it's just due to the complicated angles, it's just best to do it with a hand drill. At least I can see whether I'm central or not, so I should do it about there. Start to come through, so let's just have a look, see where it's coming through. Oh, don't know if you can see that, it's looking, looking pretty good, it looks about right. Ease that through. where it comes through so for the first time in its life it's going to have a little well of oil there that the gears work I'll show you later when it's assembled what that uh, lubricates first of all after it's all been stripped cleaned painted I'm just going to remove the paint where I don't want it to be which is on this on these mating faces around here and here so I'll just start by doing that Clean up the remnants. Ready for assembly. So this is the interlock pin.
Oops. Lubricate all this in a moment. You go in there, you go in there. Gonna watch these little oil holes because that, that needs to go at 12 o'clock so the oil goes down into the bearing part of it so make sure that those holes are all at 12 o'clock on this in this case it was at six o'clock so you couldn't get actual oil in it just pumping and start drifting back out group screw there just make sure this hole at 12 o'clock. hole in here that this locking ring needs to line up with it's offset on the locking ring so it's only going to line up one way and I think that's the way back a bit so it's tight there no play and I assume we come back That lines the hole up and that allows this rough key that's got a peg which goes into this hole. The key goes into the slot in the, the main screw. It's a snug fit. Yeah, 
empty. And it looks like the only thing that controls the thrust of this clutch system is the end plate. This is normally bathed in oil, so I'm going to just put a little bit of sealer on the plate just so it holds it in this trough. It's like a trough here. Probably get the paint off there. Put a little bit of sealer on here. Uh, grease would probably do just as well. So say it's just to maintain the oil, hold it in the trough so it lubricates this lot. Drain plug so you can actually drain the oil out. It's a tapered plug. That'll do. These two bolts hold the saddle onto the cross side. Put them back in. Thrust control on that is controlled by the circlip through the handle. Swing that back. That's just nice. that bit done. Put a little oiler in. Again make sure the oil holes are at 12 o'clock. Just lightly oil some of these components.
that's the apron assembly finished. Well, that's it for today. Hope that was useful, and we'll see you next time on Enots Engineering.